Chris the Bergeron Zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Now, the most significant thing about this benefit, though, is these 60-day plans can mm -hmm. run forever. Well, not forever until you die. Of course, that's the goal of this exercise is to do well until you're dead, right? Not to not die. But, the, but in that context, um, this is what the interesting thing of what's happened. Th this, this is the piece. And Ellen and I have talked about mm -hmm. this somewhat. No one knows exactly how this is going to come out. Mm -hmm. But the, the standard has, always, has, been, has been that to qualify for this program, just like to qualify for... Uh, assistance actually in a nursing home, mm -hmm. right? You had to be able to show that you were getting better, right? There had and to if be you, a skilled need, first of all. There, had to, there always has to be a skilled right. need, but you also had to show that as a result of the things that are being done to you, you're getting better. Then came Jimmo, the Jimmo case. Uh, Jimmo, and I think I had mentioned this in an earlier presentation, was a case that was brought by the Centers for Medicare Advocacy, which is a national organization, together with uh, Legal Services of Vermont. And they brought it against Sibelius. The case is called Jimmo versus Sibelius. We all see Secretary Sibelius all the time now talking about the disaster, on the, but we won't go there. <laughs> but so, so and, and what happened was the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare settled this case and agreed that, that over all these years, the, they have been, that, that the real standard, which should have been applied, was not whether you were getting better as a result of the care that you were getting but whether you were staying the same. Staying stable and not regressing. And not regressing. Mm -hmm. Or, and they said, it also will apply if it can be shown that the stuff that you're getting at home is going to, is going to keep you using measurable and reasonable goals, is keeping you from regressing or from getting worse uh, at, at a faster rate. If it's slowing down the rate of deterioration or keeping you stable, mm -hmm. according to the re a lot of folks reading of Jimmo, right? you're going to qualify for these services. This potentially will dramatically increase the number of people who are going to be, in my opinion, that are going to be using these services. <laughs> We're waiting now. The next kind of round of this is that a part of the agreement, uh, was, which was done in uh, eight, uh, uh, January of this year, was that by January of 2014, CMS, the, 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 big, the, the, the big entity, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, which runs all these programs, will, it will have changed their uh, handbook, their eligibility handbook, to deal with this issue. Now, the eligibility handbook I've read, it's 11 to 1,200 pages. It's really exciting. So it's taken them a long time, but, but, I, but you just want to be aware of this. This is going to be, a ma in my opinion, a major thing. I know we're working now with some VNAs as well as with some nursing homes who are, because technically this is in effect right now, not as of next January, but right now. Um, Coordination with the VNA, because we, we, we've kind of talked about that. Mm -hmm. So what is the VNA's role in terms of dealing with 60, the 60-day 60 plans? In what way? Are you, you're, the, I guess I, that was just kind of a feeder question, because you <laughs> are the people that kind of do the 60-day plans. Oh, too, yes, right? absolutely. And with regard to Jim versus Sibelius, um, most of the people who would fall into uh, requiring that continued recertification, people who you know are not expected to make progress from, are, are people who would um, have illnesses or disease processes like Parkinson's disease, an unfortunate malady for sure, but it's not terminal today, you know, it's something, right. it's, a, it's a, a disorder that people live with. Or Alzheimer's. And, or Alzheimer's, exactly. And while it's very hard to pinpoint what is the skill need, what are we doing here for the patient with Parkinson's, you know, Medicare says they're, you know, they may or may not get better, they're not making progress, but the, I think the most important part, and it's why I get up in the morning, is that people maintain some sort of stability and don't regress. And it is in Medicare's best interest, so they may end up paying more money out of pocket to care for patients long term like that. They're going to spend a whole lot less money on ER visits and hospitalizations because people who have those chronic long term illnesses, unfortunately, can easily um, have exacerbations of. And without the, the oversight of assessment by skilled clinicians, who may catch those things early and manage at home with the change of a prescription. Um, you know, ER visits we know are expensive, hospital stays are expensive, nursing homes are expensive. The whole, Medicare has recognized that, you know, home care is a cheaper alternative to care. And let's face it, we all want to be home. So that's kind of a win-win in, in our world and in your world and mine down the road. Um, there, you, there are a lot of stipulations, of course, and we have to be very creative um, and correct. You know, the care plan directs 
um, directs our 60 days. Right. And that's what with those, the PT with those or measurable the goals yeah, as well as exactly. de defining what's going to be done. Yeah. But I just want you to be aware mm -hmm. of that. This could be a huge beneficial program mm -hmm. to help you stay home. Finally, um, getting, what, uh, getting the care when you're, when you're frail. So um, if you are otherwise eligible for nursing home care, then there is a huge um, state program available to help you stay at home. We're just going to talk about these for, this for a few minutes. Uh, if you are, if you are, and by the way, otherwise eligible for nursing home care, there is a difference between what what it would take to get you to be convinced that you should go to a nursing home, right, or your spouse, right, and what the government standard is. Because your standard is, boy, I got to be practically dead before I'm going <laughs> to go to a nursing home. But their standard is, you need assistance with at least two of the activities of daily living, right? You need a skilled need and, for and, a nursing and, home, and a, and a skilled need, which would and, be right. nursing PT. Um, activities of daily living are considered, um, they're done by ancillary workers like home health aides. Um, a skilled need would be a nursing, PT, OT, the disciplines, the clinicians, basically. So you, so you need regular assistance with at least two of the activities of daily living, right? Uh, or you need to show that you are a health threat because you, you're wandering. Because in the absence of some regular supervision, you, 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 know, you might find yourself you know, just wandering the beach for a long time and they're all looking for you. If that is the case, you're medically eligible not only for Mass Health to help you pay for your nursing home care, but also for Mass Health to help you stay at home because that's where they really want you to be. As long as you can meet this test, as long as your income, monthly income, is less than $2,130, as long as your assets are less than $2,000, right? Um, except the last line, spousal income and assets are not counted. So if you are Frank and Mary, and by the way, once again, those are the ADLs, the so-called activities of daily living that we've talked about before. If you are Frank and Mary and you've got those assets and, and Frank needs, um, would otherwise be eligible for nursing home care, he can qualify for this program. And by the way, the people who certify that you are otherwise eligible for nursing home care, that's the ASAP. Remember the name that we went back earlier, the, 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 the elder services of the Cape Cod and the islands, they're going to decide whether you're, otherwise, whether you're medically otherwise eligible for nursing home care and therefore eligible for this program. If you are though, remember Frank's income was only $500 a month from his uh, pension and $1,500 a month from his social security. His total income was only $2,000 a month, right? We don't count Mary's income. So he qualifies for, for income purposes. If his, if his income were higher, if his income were actually 2000 if his social security were actually $2000 a month and his pension were 500 so he had total income of $2500 a month right he could still qualify for this program except he'd have to pay a very big deductible but so I, but so I want to go back to the the numbers though so if frank needed or was otherwise eligible for nursing home care and wanted home care and wanted a lot of home care he could simply shift all of his assets to mary today that is not, and there's no look back period regarding any of that. He could instantly shift his assets to Mary. His income would already be below the magic number. He would qualify for the frail elder waiver tomorrow. Now if he qualifies, then he is entitled to home care in an amount, whatever the amount is, that is determined by elder services of the Cape and Islands. Mm -hmm. Under the regulations, there is no limit to the amount of, or the number of hours that they can determine are necessary. Typically, they will not, and most ASAPs will not um, specify more than 40 hours per week, right? But 40 hours per week is a lot of care, right? If you're trying to help, if, if the two spouses are there, so really what Mary is trying to do is trying to supplement the care, the, 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 the care to make sure there's somebody else there so that she's not trying to do this 24-7. I'm just going to mention this bill that is actually pending in the legislature right now. The problem with this program, there is a defect with this program, and that is if you make $2,131 per month as opposed to $2,130 per month, um, you have a deductible which in that particular case would be about $1,500 per month. You'd have to pay about the first $1,500 for, for, for home care, and then MassHealth would pay the rest. Just because you're a dollar over. If you were making $2,130 per month, MassHealth would pay for the whole thing. So Senator Eldridge and others uh, uh, have a bill that is now pending, actually, um, and has quite a bit of pretty broad support, so we just wanted you to be aware of it, that would basically change that 
and make your deductible in the, these cases be whatever the amount is that you're over two thousand one hundred thirty dollars. So if you were one, if you own, if you earned two thousand one hundred thirty one dollars per month, then MassHealth would provide all the services, but you'd have a one dollar a month deductible. If you were two dollars over, you'd have a two dollar a month. So you're treated the same way. There isn't this cliff that you fall over. But you should just be aware of that program. So in in general, there are programs that are available to help you stay at home that the state provides, that the federal government health provide. Because you're in Nantucket, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that is, that is being provided right now and that, I, and that Sergeant Marshall went through. Um, finally, if, if you've, once again, if you ever want to see this program again because you just wanna, you didn't catch it all, or if you've got friends that want to see it, um, that's, that's our YouTube channel. Um, we upload these programs typically within two weeks to a month of the day that we do them so you can see them again. Thank you very much. Are there Can I any say a quick word? Absolutely, okay. Ella. Just a quick note. Just in my, I've been with the VNA now for about two years, and um, I've learned an awful lot, of course. And some of it has been quite alarming. Um, what has really struck me um, is where the gap is in care or access to care here on Nantucket. I don't know what it's like in Boston. This is where I live. This is my community. And while these are all wonderful programs, and thank you so much for sharing them with us, and I hope many people will benefit from them. What I see or what I've seen to date is that many people on Nantucket, by virtue of their assets and their incomes, etc., though they live in modest homes, they often don't fit inside of the income or the asset criteria to avail of some of these programs. In fact, very few people do. Um, for many people on Nantucket, you would have to be in low-income housing in order to access these. The second thing is that while there are great services on Nantucket and access to great people, um, Everything is more expensive here. Labor is more expensive. So if private care is more expensive here than it is in Boston, it's not because anybody's trying to rip you off. It's the cost of doing business on Nantucket. Um, but it's something to consider when you're doing your financial planning. The, no more, there is no free lunch. There are many great programs, but it's really important to start getting that financial house in order and to be realistic about what you may need and to accept some help when you need it. All of the people who are here and the people who aren't, like Sherry Hunt, who runs the elder services here, she, that woman can take $100 and make it stretch and stretch every which way. She does a phenomenal job with very short money from the state to get, you know, to keep people in their homes and to keep them safe and comfortable and with what they need. Um, and though our, oh, the other piece that I've come into or become aware of here is, besides the gap for those people who don't qualify for many programs, is access to our programs. We all know each other and we communicate very openly with each other. Um, we, you know, we know how to find each other. For many people in the community, they may know who I am, but they don't know, you know who three other people are. Or they may know who Kevin is, but not understand how he's affiliated with, with the rest of us. And I am working personally and in, as part of the Council on Aging and in many other arenas to try to tighten that up, to try to make a more cohesive, manageable way to access all of the information um, at any time. Yes. Um, and we do consider this a, pr a pleasure and privilege to be involved in any element of, of care on Nantucket. And Thank by the you. way, that's the, one of the reasons why we're, we're doing these on cable, so that it gets repeated in the cable station. Because as we were talking before, um, a lot of the folks that are here are people that are always here, are people who are active. The real question is to try to reach the people who are always at home and aren't coming here and aren't aware of some of these programs. Right. With that, and, and once again, the goal of all of this is to sleep well at night. That's the goal. There isn't any particular great program. There's no magic bullet. The goal is to sleep well at night. Any questions?